Are you going to send long-range rocket systems to Ukraine? We're not going to send to Ukraine rocket systems that can strike into Russia. So that's from yesterday, President Biden rejecting that request to give Ukraine long-range rockets that could stop the advance of Putin's forces in eastern Ukraine. They could also hit targets inside Russia, which could raise concerns about moves that could provoke Putin. Dan Hoffman studied the issue closely, CIA station chief in Moscow, now a Fox News contributor. And Dan, good morning to you. Nice to have you on here. Um, do you agree with this decision? Uh, no, I don't. We are at a pivotal moment right now in Russia's barbaric war against Ukraine, uh, where Russia enjoys an advantage in artillery, and they're using that advantage to rain down hell on uh, southern and eastern Ukraine, particularly the city of Severodonetsk, which is under assault. Ukraine needs that uh, multiple launch rocket system, the MLRS, and it's uh, quite telling that the Biden administration is determined that uh, kowtowing to Vladimir Putin outweighs keeping Ukraine in the fight, especially given the fact that Russia has indiscriminately bombed neighborhoods uh, and, and schools, uh, and of course the maternity ward in, in Mariupol uh, caused a humanitarian crisis with seven million refugees. Uh, they've caused a global food shortage by blockading uh, the, the Black Sea, the list goes on. And by doing this, we are, we are hurting Ukraine's chances of, of staying in the fight and ultimately winning the war. Dan, why has the president consistently said out loud what we will or will not do? Why is that? It, it, you know, I think sometimes the president is speaking, uh, maybe just saying what he thinks, what's on his mind. He's, he's giving Putin essentially uh, kind of preemptive concessions. He's telling Putin what we won't do uh, rather than just proceeding with what really makes the most sense for our national security. I certainly can't explain what's inside the president's head on this one. I hope that in the coming days that the administration is held accountable uh, by our uh, media uh, during uh, the upcoming uh, White House press briefings and such, because I think this is an issue that, that really we need to focus on. Okay, closely. so in, in your experience, would there be a backdoor channel between Washington and Moscow on what is, a, what is acceptable and what is not given the state of this war? And, and I think the, the proper way to use the back channel, at least in my estimation, would be for the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Milley, who's been in touch with his counterpart, that's the uh, Russian Army Chief of Staff, Gerasimov, uh, and Secretary uh, of, of Defense, Austin, has been in touch reportedly with the Russian Ministry of Defense, Shoigu, uh, simply to tell them that we're going to give Ukraine this uh, MLRS system, that Ukraine is going to use it uh, to defend themselves on their territory, that we've counseled Ukraine not to strike targets in Russia. At the end of the day, if Ukraine strikes targets in Russia, I don't think we should be held accountable for that. I think that's what we should have told the Russians. Perhaps there's some intelligence out there that has caused the Biden administration uh, to be very wary about providing this system. It does have a range of roughly 200 miles, which would get it into Russian territory. But again, given all of the attacks of, that Russia has launched on Ukraine, they're using thermobaric weapons, which cause uh, damage that, that uh, gets around physical barriers. I mean, I just don't understand how our administration officials can put their heads to the pillow at night without doing all that they can to help Ukraine defend their innocent mm -hmm. civilians being ruthlessly targeted. Uh, with regard to the food that comes out of Ukraine, normally Milley was quoted as saying, we don't have any U.S. naval vessels in the Black Sea. We don't intend to unless directed. It's a no-go for commercial shipping. Uh, that's the status of that at the moment. What the status of Putin is health-wise is still a, um, a source of rampant speculation. Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister over the weekend, said President Putin appears in public every day. Uh, this is a quote now. You can see him on the screens, read his speeches, listen to his speeches. I don't think, Lavrov said, I don't think sane people can discern any sort of symptom of disease in this man, end quotes. So the speculation goes on. What do you make of that, Dan? It goes on, and I'll tell you, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov is a mouthpiece of the Kremlin's propaganda. So he was told to say what he said, probably by Vladimir Putin, who has grown weary uh, of these rumors. There's no indication that Vladimir Putin has cancer or Parkinson's or any other things that, that, that he's been rumored to have. It's certainly not beyond the realm of possibility, but 
you know, he, the best evidence we have is that he continues to conduct his affairs of state, which means raining down hell on Ukraine, uh, you know, without any interruption. He's just recently uh, abrogated the, the law where Russian uh, conscripts or Russian military services is limited in age. Now anyone can serve in the Russian military, which is kind of a sign that, that his special operation isn't going according to plan. So for sure, he's probably feeling some stress. I'm sure that CIA leadership analysts are tracking very closely uh, his health. He has had back problems reportedly from having practiced judo. I think anybody who's, who's done that martial arts probably understands that. But this is just something we have to continue to track. Dan, thank you. Nice to see you again today. We'll talk soon. Dan Hoffman. You too. Thanks.